They opened the mill here in December 7th of 1983, I believe. Fully staffed, we uh, employ roughly 103 people. Everything that gets hauled, all the lumber that's hauled out of here, the logs, we contract that privately. They are not our employees. We use about every logger there is here. Job-wise, you know what we do probably affects I don't know, three, four hundred people pretty quickly. Plus, we help steward the forest. Without us, that becomes much harder. My name is Rich Fulton, and I'm the general manager of Malheur Lumber Company in John Day. We take logs and we convert them to boards. We also bag shavings for animal bedding. We also chip process of smaller portions that we don't consider a saw log that go to the paper plants. The paper plant that we sell to, they make uh, brown paper cardboard boxes. That's what kept us in the essential bracket. Of course, all different things are built with, with wood. So I believe that also put us in there. We first responded to all this trying to to read, learn, adapt, and move to, to make people more comfortable and to stop the spread of it too. Anytime there's flus, anything like that, that's always a concern. We've put a lot of nights, a lot of time on the phone and the internet, researching, trying to manage and, and keep this thing under wraps and keep us operational. We're primarily a pine sawmill. Right now, the pine market is terrible. The pine market was challenging prior to this. The pandemic just about sunk the ship. A lot of the places that we sell to are having huge curtailments. They've reduced their production. We haven't had a lot of people cancel their orders, but we've had a lot of them put them off. We bring logs in. That takes cash. So we gotta have something going out the back end so that we can pay all the bills. So we can't just keep piling inventory. Building the inventory and packing all that and making payroll uh, is pretty challenging. And then we don't know how long it's gonna go on. As the markets change, we're having to get a little scrappier now. We've had to uh, eliminate jobs to stay alive. If we can uh, do with not having a position, we're having to do that. We're cutting more dug fur and white fur today than we ever have. We're also trying to find little niche markets, little special orders that other people don't want to do. They can be a little expensive to do, but they're, we're able to, to keep the product moving and turning over. That's probably been one of our bigger saviors. We have some pretty good people that have a lot of experience. Uh, being a smaller mill, we're able to try different things. I think that's harder for a bigger company to do that, especially if you're, you know, you're a bigger mill that's cutting a million feet a day. They're set up for speed. They can't make different products without a whole lot of change. We have some newer technology in here, but we're pretty hands-on and manual. This industry's been tough. We've survived a lot of downturns and hard times in the market, and these are tougher times. We've taken a five-day furlough already to hold production up. We made sure that nobody lost their health care, but five-day furlough for people financially definitely had to impact them. It had to have. If we're not able to move our, our finished product, it is possible we could do another week here and there. Hopefully not, but at some point we could have to possibly do this again. We're the only ones left here in the John Day Valley. We have to do our best to stay open and keep an income coming in for everybody and, and to keep, keep ourselves rolling. The infrastructure in this industry, it's been fragile for years and years. You start losing that infrastructure, it's really, really hard to get back. 
can we be adaptable enough to survive it? I think we can, uh, but it's always a concern. These are pretty trying times.